Welcome to Escaping Purgatory, a podcast where we rewatch Supernatural, then talk it through in the hopes that we can finally escape this show. Join us each week and leave comments on upcoming episodes, and together we can escape Supernatural Purgatory. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> One of your favourite intros, well, well, well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we're on season four, episode 15. Oh my gosh, we're getting close to the end now. I know, I know. The, the last few of these episodes, there aren't many fun ones left. They're all pretty, <laughs> they're all pretty sad. Yeah, they were pretty serious. <laughs> I guess this is one of the serious ones, um, mm. though it does have its moments. Yeah. I like this one. It, the plot is stolen straight from Sandman. I'm just saying that it is. Like, <laughs> it kind of it's not really the same. To be fair, it's not really the same. But the idea of like people not dying because death can't take them is is the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not mad at it. I mean, we've got Tessa in this, who we already know death. <laughs> so death was the inspiration for her which like yes obviously but like death is in like Sandman's death was the inspiration <laughs> for her so okay it works out but yeah I thought it was a good episode overall it's uh, like it's fairly plot heavy mm-hmm. and for a Carver episode too yeah. there, there was a joke in there that I was just like mm, really but overall Dean was written a lot better in this episode <laughs> I think it's because he doesn't say much I think you're right <laughs> <laughs> I have, was very excited about the mention of the four horsemen in this because I was like, oh yeah, can't wait for their introductions. Yeah. Yeah, I got something to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts. I think let's get straight into this one. I feel like it's going to go long because uh, there's a lot to talk about here plot wise. Yeah. And I have some issues, some inconsistencies and... Some continuation <laughs> problems. <laughs> uh, but other than that, yeah. I mean, Cass was in this episode, so it's already like an 8 out of 10. So, you know, <laughs> it automatically makes an episode like an 8 out of 10. All right. Well, so we start with the, the recap, and it's a lot of introductions. Um, it's Pamela's introductions, Alistair's introduction, Anna's introduction, and then the fight at the end of the last episode. Then at the ver- then it's got the very last like epilogue scene of them at the car, and then Sam asks Dean if they're good, and he just says, "Yeah, we're good." Mm. And then it cuts into the episode, and we see these two men walking out of a bar, and they're just talking about fantasy football. Okay, it looks very cold in this place. I do wonder when they <laughs> recorded this because it's definitely cold all the way through this episode. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not the greatest time to do a ghost episode. Um, no. <laughs> I thought it was very amusing. <laughs> yeah. And as they're walking down the road, one of them bumps into a young man and the, ends up trying to mug them. And he shoots at one of the men straight in the heart and the guy falls to the ground. And as his friend is trying to revive him, the guy who got shot just sort of does the whole like... <gasps> <laughs> and sits up because the bullet wound is now closed up he's not dead when he should be yeah it was it's pretty miraculous choices of the you know the one death in the show in this episode uh being a bullet wound through the heart but let we'll just take that how I'll, it goes you know <laughs> at least it wasn't dean right? at least well yeah <laughs> <laughs> So we're in a diner and and Dean's trying to start the jukebox, but it's not working. It's like hitting it and stuff. But then he goes over uh, once it's not working and sits next to Sam. And Sam says that Bobby's found a case in Wyoming. Uh, uh, And this whole conversation happens while Dean is eating like some kind of grilled sandwich. And it made me think like Jensen Ackles has really got acting with food in his mouth down. (laughs) They even made him do it on the boys. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. What's really funny about that, <laughs> just to talk about the boys for a second, because we haven't really, and like, sure, it's kind of related to Supernatural Soul. We, I was watching it with my husband, and there was this scene in the hotel room uh, where they're talking to Soldier Boy, and he said, does, does Jen Snackles only know how to act in motel rooms? <laughs> <laughs> (laughs) 
it was a very dean scene they're in a motel room he's eating a burger while talking i'm just saying like <laughs> it was really funny um it's his comfort place <laughs> yeah i mean i guess so to be able to still be understood yeah. and have food in your mouth yeah no, that's that is a an acquired skill. It is an acquired skill. <laughs> a practice <laughs> skill. I don't know. <laughs> and it's come from fifteen years of supernatural and being ha- he had to eat on screen. So, yeah, you know. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so they talk about this case while Dean's eating, um, and Sam saying that there's a small town and no one's died in the past week and a half. So there was a guy with cancer who just walked right out of the hospice. There was a guy who got shot by the mugger who we saw and walked away absolutely fine. So Sam's like, well, it's got to be something weird, you know, baby peep making demon deals or something like that. Then Sam just like gets up to leave, says to Dean, get that to go and just like starts walking out. So- He's really enthusiastic, right? Like, yeah. It's- Usually he, Sam sort of talks kind of slowly and like really likes to explain what he's doing. It's got to be something nasty, right? I mean, people making deals. It's like kind of getting really amped up for this case. Yes. And I wonder if it's because he really does think it's demons. Ooh. So he's like, I'm going to be like, you know how a little kid gets to like play with their toy for the first time? Yeah. I wonder if it's a bit like that where he's just like, oh, I get to I get to do stuff with demons. Like I can I can. <laughs> use my powers and it's gonna be like that kind of excitement (laughs) or just like getting out his crazy straw yeah (laughs) there is that too (laughs) you're right actually he's super amped up in this this episode whereas dean he doesn't get his sandwich to go he just sits there looking at it like despondently sure you want me going with you why wouldn't i i don't know i don't want to be holding you back or nothing dude i've told you a hundred times that was the siren talking not me can we get past this yeah, we're past. Clearly, although they both said at the end of the last episode that they're good with each other. I mean, Dean's not. <laughs> I mean, we all know that Dean could hold a nice grudge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when his like abilities are called into question, I feel. Yeah. He didn't really say anything to Sam that was as damaging. He was just like, you're keeping secrets, which is true. <laughs> yeah whereas Sam was like no you're crap now <laughs> so, um, yeah it was pretty, pretty harsh I think this probably will be mentioned again of course so they go to the guy's house who got shot um, and they are claiming to be bloggers <laughs> which is the first time they've used that mm-hmm. they say they're from floredbythelord.com <laughs> Which is funny. I'll give, I'll give it to Carver. He can write some funny stuff. Well, we know this, though. He He's good at one-liners. Yeah, you're right. He totally is. I think Dean, Dean says, all of God's glory fits a blog. <laughs> and the way he shares a look with Sam after he, like, says that, it's just like, did that land? <laughs> <laughs> Um, So they're asking him because they're under the guise like, this was a miracle that happened to you, so we want to know about it. The guy explains there's actually still a bullet in his heart, but everything's fine. And when he's asked to explain it, he said, well, it must have been a miracle. I thought God was giving me a second chance. And then he says, I had this feeling like angels were watching over me. And Dean nods at him like, oh, yeah, I know that feeling. (laughs) (laughs) He even says to Dean, like, I wouldn't expect you guys to understand. And and Dean gives him a knowing look and says, Mm -hmm. well, we'll just have to try. (laughs) It's all very, like, (laughs) on the nose. Which nudge nudge. (laughs) Yeah, but, like, for us, it's like, okay, yeah, I see what you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Sam doesn't seem to pick up the hint because he's just like, did you go to a crossroads? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it was very subtle, Sam. Very, very subtle. It's great. I love it so much. It's like, did you meet someone with black eyes or red? And the guy's like, what? I'm really suspicious of them. So then they just leave. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They didn't actually get any answers from this guy. It was a miracle. And I think it was angels. Yeah, exactly. They go back to the motel room that they're staying in. And um, Dean's looking at a news article. He's got a big picture of like a boy on there. that is like uh, part of the news article that he's reading. Um, as Sam comes in, uh, he's been 
investigating the cancer survivor who apparently had actually died. Like, they turned off his life support machine, but now he's absolutely fine. Dean has been looking into the last person that died in the town, that who was a kid called Cole Griffith. Sam's like, well, what are you thinking? And Dean's like, well, maybe it is a miracle, which is quite unlike him, to be fair. Mm -hmm. But maybe since meeting angels, he's a bit more like, eh, could be. (laughs) (laughs) And so Sam kind of makes the point that, you know, these folks aren't getting taken because there's maybe no one to take them. He makes that leap pretty quickly, actually, in this episode. He hasn't had any experiences with the Reaper, so like... Why would that be your first thought? <laughs> I guess so. I guess the last time Sam had a dealing with the Reaper, there were people being saved from death. That's his faith, right? Yeah. So it's kind of similar. I mean, Dean even mentioned here the faith healer thing. So it's kind mm-hmm. of linking back to the episode. Fine. Sam makes extraordinary leaps at the best of times. <laughs> so, okay, fine. So, you know, Dean's like, well, nobody's dying. So what's happening then? Like the local reapers are on strike. And Sam's like, well, let's ask. Let's ask somebody. And he wants to go and talk to this kid who died. Look, if he's the last person to die around here, then maybe he's seen something. We should talk to him. I love how matter of fact you are about that. Strange lives. This this episode was made, made me want to watch more of those like out of context supernatural montages. Yes. There are so many moments in this, like that line, there's another one later on as well. That's just <laughs> if these are real people and someone just said that, you'd be like, What? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the fact that Dean's so he's almost like breaking the fourth wall. Like he's so so self aware that this is an they live odd lives. Yes. You know? Yeah. Whereas Sam's just got used to it at this point. He's like, yeah, whatever, let's go speak to the dad. And like, this is normal. Like, what are we doing? What's going on? So they go to the cemetery to have this, I assume, seance. They literally drew like a pentagram on the floor of like candles. Um, and they're like burning stuff. Dean's actually got John's journal out. We haven't seen it in ages. Mm. Dean says again, like, this job is jacked. <laughs> like, he's just thinking this is really stupid and mm-hmm. and also he's kind of not on board with this case almost you want me to gank a monster or torture corpse hey pff, let's light it up right but but this if we fix whatever this is people will start dropping dead good people look I, I don't want them to die either Dean but there's a natural order you're kidding right what you don't see the irony in that I mean, you and me, we're like the poster boys of the unnatural order. All we do is ditch death. Yeah, but the normal rules don't really apply to us, do they? Exactly. And we know how Dean feels about death and people dying. and Because he knows what's on the other side. Yeah. And knows what can happen to people on the other side. Mm-hmm. That like, I feel like the good people thing is him trying to convince himself. Because he says that a lot in this episode. He does, yeah. Like, he's trying to convince himself that everybody that he meets is who's gonna die isn't gonna end up where he did yeah i agree with you i think this episode is part of him accepting that there might be somewhere else to go as well Mm. i feel like that's become easier for dean now he's actually met angels yes but at the same time i don't think he thinks that heaven is it's all cracked up to be yeah there's got to be a catch too right there's there's gotta be something I mean, Sam Sam does say, say, like, look, I don't want them to die, but there is a natural order. I mean, at this point, Dean's died twice. Uh, not not including Mystery Spot in that. Well, so he's he's come... Well, yeah, he's died twice, but come close to death and an additional time to that. Yeah. And then... Oh, yeah, so, yeah, because I, I wasn't counting faith in that. And then Sam, Sam's died once. So, yeah, they've got four deaths between them, not including mm-hmm. Mystery Spot. So, yeah, okay, fine. And Sam says, yeah, but the normal rules don't really apply to us, do they? Dean can't kind of get with that. He's like, we're no different from anybody else. We're not different than anybody else. I'm infected with demon blood. You've been to hell. Look, I know you want to think of yourself as Joe the Plumber, Dean, but you're not. Neither am I. The sooner you accept that, the better off you're going to be. It's really interesting. Con- I thought this was a really interesting conversation. Dean wants to be normal, despite the job that they do. And yeah. doesn't think he should be getting any special treatment. Hits me in the finale <laughs> feels. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something about Sam in this episode that like 
he's he's on a power trip right yeah surely sure. because there's something about this line in particular like saying but normal rules don't apply to us i don't feel like he usually thinks that that feels like ruby when he says yeah. that that i feel that, like is her influence of being like but you're a special sam like mm -hmm. you and dean are special 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 all your special boys <laughs> special boys <laughs> so i feel like this is his personality changing in a very visible way and if we're going along the like addiction storyline with sam it makes total sense right mm -hmm. because he's very juiced up in this episode yes as well he's definitely on a power trip like that yeah you're right that's exactly the words to use they get back to what they're doing this guy this guy suddenly appears with a like a flashlight it's like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> They just can't explain themselves. This is not what it looks like. <laughs> really? Because it looks like devil worship. What? No, no, this is not devil worship. This, this is, this, this is the... Uh, I don't have a good answer. <laughs> They've got literally got a pentagram with candles. Like, I don't know how you explain this. I, they could have said it was devil worship. What are they going to do? I mean, yeah, what's this guy going to do? Kick him out? They're, they could definitely take him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, Sam says, okay, fine, we'll leave. And the man says, you're not going anywhere. And then he says, ever again, Sam. And it's like... <gasps> da, da, da. <laughs> His, like, eyes roll back and go white. Mm -hmm. And Dean immediately knows that it's Alistair. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I thought you got deep fried, extra crispy. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair says no just his like vessel the pediatrician that he was riding he says no time to chat got a hot date with death and then he throws Dean so far <laughs> he really Alistair really messes with Dean in this episode mm -hmm. like f every encounter they have is like the first time he's like no I'm gonna hurt Dean which is awful he goes to flick Sam out of the way and he just doesn't move and he tries again, and like Sam's just like, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Sam then manages to pin Alistair against the tree, but before he can do anything, he smokes out and leaves. Which, I mean, the last time we interacted with Alistair, Sam was literally powerless against him. Like, he couldn't do anything to touch him. No, we had the funny... <laughs> 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 the, the flying towards the camera. Yeah, yeah. it's great. <laughs> So, I mean, for us, the audience, it's like, well, what's changed between heaven and hell and here? Because we saw him get into Ruby's car and we don't know what they're up to. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I thought Sam was going up to um, when I like, first watched this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think my running theory was literally that he was getting powers from demon sex. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I in some ways kind of it's very vampiric right yeah or yeah. he's in blood <laughs> it's yeah T it's temptation it's being led down the path of temptation <laughs> but like i didn't guess it was the whole demon blood thing i thought it was the fact that he was like sleeping with ruby and i was like that's wild that like having sex with demon gives you psychic power <laughs> <laughs> So I think at this point I was power watching all of these episodes. Yeah. So I wasn't forming like theories of like what was going on. I mean, to be fair, like I feel like if you probably went back into, I don't know, the forums or whatever, people probably could have guessed it was demon blood because literally that's what Yellow Eyes was doing. So it makes sense. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like yeah he's just getting freaky with ruby so he meets up with her <laughs> they have a good time and then he's all juiced up ready to like exercise some demons <laughs> for like a, like extended periods of time <laughs> yeah but it like wears off so he has yeah. to go sleep with ruby again <laughs> i think that actually would have been a better storyline <laughs> it would have made it would have made um, in season five, I think it is like Detroit really funny because there's a, I, I mean, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but there's a bit where literally I think he's brought like two milk jugs of demon blood and it's like, you've got to get ready to, for this fight, <laughs> but it would have been funny for it's like, quick, Sam, take your clothes off. <laughs> We're going to get all night. <laughs> we got to get ready to fight Lucifer. 
Well, just like I should write this, <laughs> and it would be it would be wonderful. <laughs> yeah, if you want me to come on and write the HBO version, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready, ready and R rated. <laughs> so Dean is knocked out. Well, not knocked out, but he's on the bed, like icing his head from where he got smacked into a grave. Um, <laughs> what was with that camera angle? <laughs> what was the, I don't remember. Uh, for some reason, because he's he's on the he's sideways on the bed, like almost like diagonal on the bed with his like feet like on the floor, and they decided to just go in like knee first up to his head. <laughs> so it's like why? We wanted a torso shot. Uh, of apparently, course. apparently. <laughs> I don't know. That's really funny. Sam asks how he's doing, and he says, "I'm in pain." That's how I'm doing. I think I have a concussion. And Sam's just like, okay, I'll just have aspirin. I'm like, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and Dean wants clarification as to what happened with Alistair. Because obviously he was there. Alistair yeah. was there and suddenly he was not there. Because they don't... Sh- like, did the, the guy he was possessing, the groundskeeper... I guess he was the groundskeeper for the cemetery. Like, what happened to him? I think he would have Is just okay? dropped to the ground, right? Yeah, so, so- was he... Dead? <laughs> oh, probably. Knowing Alistair, I imagine that he like killed Tortured his vessels him. for fun. Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> Sam says I I tried to fling him, but it didn't work. So he bailed. <clears throat> and then Sam is trying to busy himself with making coffee and he's just like, oh, you know, I got no idea. <laughs> and Dean's frustrated. Very just like, you know, I'm he, he says you can keep your secrets. And there's nothing I can do, but don't treat me like an idiot. It's like, if you're going to lie, at least put some effort into lying. Because this yeah. is, there's no effort in this lie. So I don't know what happened. <laughs> like, Sam, like Sam wouldn't have a theory, you know? Mm-hmm. It's so yeah. out of character. It's just like, oh, who, who knows what could have possibly happened? <laughs> All the demon blood rushed to his feet, so it stuck to the ground. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like demon blood tendrils anyway oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Sam's like what I'm not keeping secrets <laughs> so bad yeah Dean's like okay so what's the plan do we go back and try to Q&A the kid Sam's like no we don't need to Bobby called and did some digging and basically because Sam's so smart <laughs> his theory was correct yeah <laughs> yeah I mean, this is this is a, I guess, a spoiler for the end of this episode, but I'm guessing everyone's watched it now. I mean, of course, Bobby rings and confirms his theory because he's trying to move the case along. Because yeah. not Bobby. And <laughs> 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 I, I, I think we need to keep this in mind actually while we're watching this episode because it does make the episode funnier. Is that Cass is watching them the whole time they're doing this. So he saw them going to the graveyard with their pentagram and candles and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's like, earliest chance I get, I'm ringing them and being like, look, look, guys, <laughs> it's Reaper. You're probably not the wrong truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we hurry this along, please? Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, if you think about it, what Sam says next makes much yeah. more sense now you know that it's Cass. And he bloodied death under the newborn sky. Sweet to taste, but bitter when once devoured. Swanky, what the hell's that mean? Well, it's from a very obscure, very arcane version of Revelations. Which means what I think it means? Basically, you kill a reaper under the solstice moon. Tomorrow night, by the way. You got yourself a broken seal. How do you nice a reaper? You can't kill death. I don't know. Maybe demons can. Where the hell are the angels is what I want to know. We could use their help for once. I, I, I think Cass probably gave him the translation too. Probably, yeah. Yeah. It's like... You know, said it on the phone, like, you know, bloody death, blah, blah, blah. And Sam's like, huh? And he's like, think it might mean (laughs) killing a reaper under a solstice moon, Sam. (laughs) I have the original Revelations text in front of me. (laughs) (laughs) Don't ask how I got it. (laughs) Uh, Scribed by Metatron himself. (laughs) Oh, gosh. I guess Mestron didn't write that one, but whatever, it's Who fine. Who knows? And Dean asks, you know, how how do you ice a reaper? You can't kill death. Well, you know, that's not true. That's not true. 
Um, and Sam says, I don't know, maybe demons can. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it's it does funny. make it so much funnier. <laughs> Sam then says, where, where are the angels? Where, uh, where the hell are the angels is what I want to know. We could use their help for once. Well, you just got a big load of help, <laughs> Sam. You just got a big load of help. <laughs> What's interesting is they don't think about praying to Cass yet. It's not in their like repertoire of things to do. They just mm-hmm. expect him to turn up if he needs to. Yeah. Which... Well, because he like there's been no indication that anything like that would work that's true like, Cass hasn't said anything mm-hmm. Anna didn't say anything like they've always just showed up when they needed them to do something <laughs> yeah you're right actually like how do you summon an angel they don't know that yet mm-hmm. mm. you would think Sam might figure that one out because he's the one who likes to pray right? would, yeah but <laughs> is Cass gonna come when Sam prays at this point not yet. <laughs> Not yet, but he does say something in this episode. He does say, you know, I created you and Sam. So he, I, you know. I, th- I think he has full regard for him. I'm just, mm-hmm. I'm just like, would he would he actually come if, if Sam asked him to? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so Dean says, okay, well, we're going to have to take care of this one ourselves. And they're like, well, so what are we going to do? We're just going to, you know, find your neighborhood reaper. And Sam Sam points out that Reapers are invisible. The only people that can see them are the dead or the dying. And so they're going to become ghosts. I mean, this this was Dean's first idea. His first idea. He's just like... (laughs) We're going to kill ourselves, basically. (laughs) I mean, let's not be around the bush here. Yes, that's what that is. Uh, This isn't the only time he does this either, to like find Reapers. Uh, he's just like, yeah, he's so reckless with his life. I mean, this yeah. is a little different because they're not actually dead, but it's still... They could be. They could be, yeah. They could very well be. <sighs> and, like, they didn't call in anybody for backup to, yeah. like, watch their bodies, because then they would be dead. Yeah, exactly. They they left it to Pamela? <laughs> she she mm-hmm. can sense things and see things. Like, she's not helpless. But she's a daredevil. She, yeah, but she also can't fight off a, like demons. No. So I don't know what they were thinking with this plan. This is a really, really reckless plan. And just one, I, I know we're going to talk about in a second what the plan actually is, but why did they never use this again? When Dean does this again, he literally kills himself rather than well, actual guess... projecting. Because they don't have Pamela. Do you need Pamela to astral project? I guess you need someone with psychic powers. Oh, maybe. Or I, whatever she has. I don't... Is she a witch? Is she... A, I mean, they, they they had access to... I can't remember. When was this? Uh, Do they have Rowena at this point? Yes, definitely. But it was an emergency. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was it was, a, it was a quick, quick, I need to speak to the Reapers kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I can't with it anymore it's just like you but you would think in the time i think this is i can't remember what season this is it's a late season you would think between now and then or then and now whatever they would look up how to astral project just in case they need to do it again you would think sam would be interested in it yeah you would think <laughs> whatever <laughs> it's, it's too convenient it's too yeah, convenient it's more exciting to watch like them get the paddles out so they decide that uh, Pamela is the best way to astral project. And they, there's a lot of, like, seeing jokes. <laughs> My favourite one is when she says to Sam, what do you say to deaf people? And I think of the first time he met Eileen and he, just, he said, fuck you by accident. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's always been... <laughs> really awkward he's putting his foot in his mouth yeah <laughs> Pamela says which uh, which one of you brainiacs came up with the actual astral projection <laughs> and I love Dean just goes yo <laughs> like raises his hand yo it was me I'm the dumbass <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Pamela is just like clearing it up for the audience she says so you want you want to rip your souls out of your bodies and take a little stroll mm-hmm. through the spirit world spirit world do you do you have any idea how heavy duty insane that is? 
Pamela is... It's all, it's getting fed up with them. Sick of being hauled back into your angel demon soche greaser crap. Well, look, I'd love to be kicking back with a cold one watching Judge Judy too. Nice. More blind jokes? You know what I mean. And Dean's like, well, it's the end of the world. He gives the end of the world speech. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> what I always find funny is like when they get someone in like this, that they seem to have the conversation that they should have had on the phone before they made the massive journey to wherever they are. So it's like, oh, we need your help. Okay, arrive. And like, you want to do what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you would think there would have to be like supplies to get and like yeah. things like that. But no, I'm just like, <laughs> and surely she would, yeah, you're right. She would have had the argument of like, I don't want to be involved with your crap. Yeah. You're going to have to convince me and at the same time she does like sam's butt so maybe that's just more than... yeah it's a, it's a funny tv thing it's not just supernatural that's guilty yeah. of this but like i just always find it really funny it's like did you not talk at all before you like took this journey to come see them and who brought her because last time dean went to go get her this time she just showed up obviously she didn't drive herself maybe dean did go to get her i don't know how long it's been i guess mm-hmm well, it's oh, got to no. be less than a day. That's true. I don't know where Pamela lives. It must be close to Wyoming. <laughs> Supernatural time travel. Yeah, exactly. It was convenient. I mean, she could have taken a plane. Yeah. Because there's only, there's only Dean and Sam that don't fly anywhere. <laughs> Again, it's like the Chuck effect. They needed her so she was there. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they, they start to get ready for their astral projection. It's way less cooler than like... Doctor Strange, I have to say. <laughs> no palm to the forehead. <laughs> that, would have been, that would have been pretty good, though. Yeah. They're going in half-cocked. They ha they don't mm -hmm. have a plan no. at all. She she even asked them, you know, what are you going to do once you find the Reaper? How are you going to save it? And Dean just responds with style and class, and apparently that just seems to work. <laughs> That's 90% of Dean's plans, though. It's like, well, we'll just we'll do the thing, and the thing will work out. It'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> Because they're special. <laughs> they are special, although he doesn't want to believe they're special. So I don't know why he thinks their plans are going to work out. <laughs> I don't know. Because it's worked before. <laughs> exactly. Survivor bias on their stupid plans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Pamela's pointing out all the flaws in their plan because they're going to basically be uh, fog. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be able to touch anything, move anything. They're going to be defenseless. And Sam's like, well, you know, we've, we've been beaten to pulp by ghosts before. <laughs> Um, and Pam's like, yeah, but they have, they've had time on their side. Mm -hmm. Dean's like, well, I guess we're going to have to start cramming. Of all people to kind of get ghost powers quickly, mm -hmm. Sam would be definitely the one. Because he's already got the, I, well, who knows? Because it's supernatural, so we never really <laughs> learn about Sam's powers. But they could be in the same realm, right? Because demons yeah. and ghosts are affected about by the same kind of thing, like... Salt keeps demons out. Iron keeps demons out. They're both previously human. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he would maybe be able to tap into that bit of his brain faster than Dean would, but it doesn't seem to be the case this episode, so who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So uh, they lie down and Pamela starts her incantation. We see it's sort of like a, it's a little bit warmer. And mm -hmm. then suddenly it's very cold, like a cooler tone to the... Visually, it's a cooler tone. Yeah. And a little bit darker. Dean sits up and he's like, well, nothing like shooting blanks. What's plan B? <laughs> he looks over to Sam, who stood up, and Sam's also on the bed. So he's like, oh, actually, okay, it did work. <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes a ghost reference. And at first I was like, because he says, oh, I'm so filling up Demi more. Yeah. And I was like... That was the line that kind of was just like, ugh. But then I was like, okay, but it is. It's exactly what Patrick Swayze does in that movie. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah, fine, Dean. Fine, Dean. I mean, it wouldn't be Dean if he didn't make a ghost reference. Yeah. So, <laughs> While being a ghost. I mean, it's funny that he has watched Ghost. Pretty romantic movie. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I feel like that's the kind of movies that they wouldn't watch because they'd be like, oh, that's not true. <laughs> He's only watching it for a so you know it, you know. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. All right, so I'm assuming you're somewhere over the rainbow. Remember, I have to bring you back. I'll whisper the incantation in your ear. You have got a great ass. What'd she say? What'd she say? Sam just shrugs. 
She clearly like Sam more than Dean. That's what I'm saying. And she always that. has. Yeah, she always <laughs> has. I think she just thinks Dean's a dick. <laughs> I wonder if she blames Dean for everything. Absolutely. I think she blames Dean for everything. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's his stupid angel that burned out her eyes. Like, Was it? I mean, in terms of like ev- everything, everything for like bringing Sam back into hunting and all that kind of, yeah. like going all the way back. Just say, look, if, if, yeah. There, <laughs> there's a lot of crap that happened to Pamela that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Dean. Yeah. Yeah, including this episode. Included in this episode. So they're now outside on the street and as they're walking, a jogger goes through Sam. Dean starts laughing. (laughs) This is when filming this on a cold day outside. Yeah, it was great. (laughs) Not not a good idea when you're supposed to be ghosts (laughs) who wouldn't breathe <laughs> i assume because you can every time they talk every time they breathe it is that it is that cold that they are mm-hmm. you know it's that cold because when they were in the grave yeah. the, in the cemetery dean had gloves on yeah he did have gloves on <laughs> you're so right I, yeah i forgot about that but, but it must have been absolutely freezing and also he made a point in the graveyard of blowing smoke like he was mm-hmm. like, Ooh, it's so yeah. cold. So I was looking out for it for the rest of the episode because he made such a big deal out of being cold in, the, in mm-hmm. that graveyard. Oh, you look cute in little glovesies. Yeah. <laughs> it was very funny. And because it's Dean, and because Dean is just a man child 95% of the time, he sticks his arm through to Sam. But if we were ghosts, I'd probably also fist you. <laughs> Absolutely, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> I mean, Sam just kind of looks more annoyed than anything. Am I making you uncomfortable? Get out of me. You're such a prude. Come on. They, so had, to, they had to do the joke. It was, yeah, it was of course. easy goal. Yeah. <laughs> how, how many more times are they both going to be ghosts together that they can do this? Exactly. And they go, they've got to do it. Yeah, as, as they're walking through the street, Dean's like, well, we've been looking around for hours and we haven't seen any smoke. All right, let's go to Victoria's Secret and have a peep. Gross. I, I noticed as they were walking that Sam has to, like, shuffle aside to avoid walking into a stop sign. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, that's what I'm at too. <laughs> oh, I love these ghost episodes. Because <laughs> you can't eat. It's just impossible to do them. Like, yeah. Yeah. I love that it's just, like, Obviously, walking along, like they just didn't give him enough room to like walk past the stop sign comfortably. So, like, maybe mm-hmm. have to go past it, and they decided to keep that take. Like, fine. <laughs> As they are walking, they see this house, and there's a kid in the window, and the kid is staring right at them. Mm-hmm. As they're looking up, Dean identifies him as Cole. Yeah, and then he, Cole flickers away and vanishes, and so they're like, oh. We found the right house. We should have been looking for that in the first place because you wanted to talk to the kid in the first place. And like, you knew where he lived because you'd done this research on him. So why are you always walking around town? Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Here we are. (laughs) You you wasted a day. (laughs) Basically, yeah. Yeah. You know you only have until tonight because of solstice moon and you don't do the one thing. Anyway, whatever. How could it be a solstice moon? No, hang on. <laughs> no, no, no. There is a problem. There is a problem here. <laughs> They've already had a Halloween episode, mm-hmm. which is the equinox. So it must be nearly Christmas, right? Christmas is a solstice moon, December. Because uh... there's a summer solstice, midsummer. And then there's the winter solstice, which is uh, Christmas. So it must be almost Christmas. Maybe it's not a problem. Okay, fine. (laughs) But I feel like more time has passed than between Halloween and nearly Christmas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's been like... I'm pretty sure one of the episodes has said it's been February. And this ain't midsummer. (laughs) I don't know. I think they're just trying to hope that you're not paying attention. (laughs) Well, I clocked you, Supernatural. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. know. (laughs) So we're inside Cole's house and we see this older woman, presumably Cole's mother, and she's talking to him because obviously she's feeling grief. As she's speaking, a 
football soccer ball starts to spin Mm -hmm. and then goes flying towards the door the mother leaves and then we see sam and dean in the room and cole's throwing more sports balls at them yeah and they're trying to calm him down <laughs> sam's trying to be all puppy dog eyes and says look it's it's not going to be easy to hear but you're dead <laughs> you're a spirit us too and cole says thanks Haley joel i know i'm dead <laughs> <laughs> like yeah this kid's like yeah obviously like what are you even talking about of course i know i'm dead oh no i love um like they did the decoration as generic boys room there's li- like if you have a look at the stuff on the wall there's one one post that's just framed picture of football <laughs> it's just a big football <laughs> a picture poster on the wall it's like what kid has that framed football yeah <laughs> you'd have your like play like favorite player or somebody or like a something something Not football <laughs> i am generic boy i like the football <laughs> i like sports <laughs> Um, it then cuts to the kitchen and Mrs. Griffith is pouring a glass of vodka, which is really showing that she's in grief, mm-hmm. apparently. They're all watching her. So weird. <laughs> yeah. And she, he explains how he died. He had an asthma attack triggered by the cold. Mm-hmm. He came to ter- terms with being dead very quickly. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess so. It's, it's only been like a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it was about 10 days. Mm-hmm. And then he says a creepy old man in a black suit wanted me to go with him but he didn't want to go and sam asked how he got rid of him and he says he didn't a black smoke came and took him away mm. why did the reaper appear to him as a creepy old man i thought reapers were supposed to take on the look of like someone they could trust or was that just for dean well when we see this reaper later he's just an old guy in a suit so mm-hmm. i think that's just how this kid's describing him but like Maybe they have, maybe in their millennia of existing, Reapers have a form that they just got comfortable with, they think is reassuring, but they're so removed from humans, maybe it's not always that reassuring. There's a lot of inconsistency with Reapers in Supernatural, because they are technically supposed to be angels, and that's not addressed in this episode, and I don't think that they're meant to be angels in this episode. No, I don't no. think so. Especially with what Tassa says. Yeah, exactly. Not... Yeah, maybe he came to him as an old man because that's what this kid expected death to look like. And then the lights start flickering and like Mrs. Grethup is still like looking around like, what's going on? It, it looks very much like a ghost sort of mm-hmm. event. Yeah. And Cole says they're back and uh, they see this white ghostly figure. Mm-hmm. Somehow Sam knows it's another Reaper. He's <laughs> never seen a Reaper. I mean, neither of them... Dean has technically, yes, seen a reaper, mm-hmm. but doesn't remember it. Sam has never seen a reaper. Mm-hmm. So how would he know it was another reaper? He's just really, really smart, Annabelle. Yeah, I guess so. They follow the, the reaper up the steps and a woman starts to come down and it's Tessa. Hey. And yeah, looking fine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she says, Dean. Hello. No, she should not say hello. <laughs> she should have said hello, Dean. It was there. It was ready for the taking. I was expecting her to say it and she didn't. She just said Dean. So fine. Yeah. <laughs> Too many callbacks to everybody else who says yeah. it, like who just disappears and reappears in Dean's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, Sam looks at Dean confused and Dean's like, oh, do I know you? And Kat, Tessa says, we go way back. So they all congregate in the kitchen and Tessa is there with Sam and Dean. Um, Cole ran off upstairs somewhere uh, Mm away because he's scared of reapers, I guess. And Tessa says, like, you don't remember me. Oh, so she expected him to remember her. That's weird. Even though she specifically said, you won't remember any of this, didn't she? (laughs) Um, I think at that point it was Azazel. Oh, yes, you're right. Yes, I forgot she got possessed. And Dean said, honestly, if I had a nickel for every time I heard a girl say that, you're going to have to freshen my memory. So she steps up to him and pulls him into a kiss. It's really funny how whenever they shoot Dean kissing people, it's always the same shot. Have you noticed this? (laughs) I have not. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why. Maybe I should like gift them all together at some point, but like... I don't know. It's the same shot every time. The way, just the way he does it, like eyes closed, 
Yeah, it's really funny. Three quarters turned. <laughs> yeah, like slightly turned. I mean, I can't imagine having to kiss people on screen. I reckon it's the most awkward thing ever because it's like, can you just move your faces like five degrees more towards the camera? Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine doing that. Yeah, she kisses him and it shows a flashback in black and white of, of 201 from In My Time of Dying. And then Dean gets all of his memories back from that. So he knows who she is. He knows that he almost died or well, he did die and that she had given him a choice to go with her or not. So then he knows how ghosts are made. <laughs> I feel like they kind of knew that already somehow, but like he didn't know, know it until he was a ghost. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to think what other information he got back from that kiss. Because he already um... knows about John uh, making the deal. He found that out after the fact. Mm -hmm. I think it's mostly knowledge about ghosts and reapers. Yeah, and then also what's mentioned at the end of this, like another conversation between the two of them. Yeah, exactly. That's probably the only things, really. I mean, he knows he died. So that's like big information. Yes. <laughs> um, and Dean says, like, Tessa, when he pulls back, and she said, that's one of my names, yeah. And Sam, so Sam's like, oh, you do know her. And he explains that, yes, it's, you know, from the hospital after the accident. Because Sam, the thing is, is that Dean has some of this information because he had the whole seance with Sam and Sam didn't forget that happening. <laughs> so he knows he was a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he does say then, like, so this is the Reaper that came after you. So yeah. Sam does remember all of that. Yeah. There's a difference between knowing and knowing, though, right? Yeah. And, and, his... and also, you know they didn't talk after that episode, right? Yeah. They didn't talk about the fact that he was almost taken by a reaper and, like, suddenly he wasn't. Yeah. Like, it became more about the fact that John had made a deal for mm -hmm. Dean's soul and that was kind of it. And, you know, Dean knows now... It, it's more important that it's about the choices that he made and because him and Tessa had some quite, I'd say, like, intimate conversations. Mm-hmm about like what it means to be alive and his responsibilities and what he actually owes the world and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's good. Go back and watch 201. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so Tess is like, well, this was fun and goes to like leave. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he's like, wait, you can't, you can't take this kid. We need him for information because there are demons in the town. They've taken your friend, like uh, the other Reaper. Um, and the kids know, knows where they are. And Tessa says, so... And Sam says something that he never said. He said, you should shag ass. For all we know, they could try and snatch you too. That does not mean what he thinks it means. <laughs> At least not to everybody, because that does not mean get out of town. I mean, not to British people, that doesn't. <laughs> no. No. I've, I've, I've never heard that turn of phrase before. I, I have. And it's still have? like... Uh, yeah, I have. It's... It's like quite old. It's quite an old saying. Like I don't know. Okay. It's just very weird hearing it. He could have said that in literally any other way that sounded more like Sam. Again, I this episode feels very much like Ruby's influence over Sam. Yeah, and I totally. It, again, this was one of those things. I was just like, <laughs> like you said, it's not something he would ever say. <laughs> Maybe she said this at one point, just picking up on her mannerisms yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> so we know about Tessa already that she's very into the natural order of things, and she yeah. confirms this by saying, like, you know, this town is off the rails, and someone has to set it straight. Tessa doesn't care about the whole demon angel dance off. Um, <laughs> she's like, I just want to do my job. Which is further mm -hmm. confirming that at this point, Reapers are not canonically angels, surely. Unless yeah. they're just a neutral, they just come from the same like family, but are neutral agents. Which makes mm -hmm. more sense, I guess. If you think of how angels operate, it does feel very accurate. Yeah. So like, Angels are all about like doing their job. Mm -hmm. That's all. This, that's all she wants to do. Sam's like, yeah, okay, we want you to help you do your job, but if you just leave, and she's like, no, um, and he's like, and he's like, please, can you wait until we fix this? Like they're having a full sort of like she's really stubborn. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, she just agrees and says, okay, but just so we're clear, when I start reaping again, I'm starting with that kid because I guess chronologically, he's been, yeah, he's been dead the longest, <laughs> yeah. Sam says, okay, I'll go find him. And he goes upstairs. And Dean asks, what are you going to say to him? And Sam says, whatever, I have to. And I'm like, mm. Yeah. Not good, not good. 
he goes up to Cole's room and Cole's hiding in his like closet. Cole's kind of saying like how his mother is really sad. So he wants to be with her because, you know, he thinks that being around is making it better for her. And then Sam kind of promises him if he helps them that he wouldn't ever have to leave this house. What if I told you that if you helped me, you wouldn't have to leave here, ever? What about the one downstairs? Tessa? No, she wouldn't bother you. No Reaper would. You could just stay here with your family for as long as you wanted. You can do that? Yeah, you bet I can do that. You swear? I swear. Sam, you are a terrible, terrible person. <laughs> You'd lie to a kid. You'd <laughs> lie to a dead kid. Lie to it. But at the same time, they do have a choice. Like, they have to go with a Reaper. They can stay. So technically, he's not lying. But Sam doesn't know they get a choice. But yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, Tess has just said, I'm coming for that kid. And he's gone up and told him, oh, no, it's fine. You can stay forever. Mm -hmm. mm, it's it's not very again it's not very sam like he, he, this, he's very off in this episode it's it's all the it's the demon blood talking it is and i wonder if he met with ruby just before they they left for town and he's it's... certainly juiced exactly <laughs> exactly in the kitchen dean and tessa are talking tessa says i'll tell you life is funny which is quite a funny thing for reapers to say i think yeah you and me together again are you are you making a move on me you're the one that got away dean you'd be surprised how little that happens to me and then dean tell like says can i tell you something between like you and me which is quite a dean doesn't do this like he doesn't mm -hmm. but he, i guess he's got all the memories of them already having quite like close conversations so he feels like he yeah. can trust her after our little uh, experience For that whole year, I felt like I had this hole in my gut. Like I was missing something. I didn't know what. Do you know what it was? It was you. The pain of losing my father and Sammy. I just... I wish I'd gone with you for good. But I guess things are different now. What? The angels on your shoulder. He uses this phrase so much throughout Supernatural, like feeling empty, like he's got a hole inside himself that he can't fill. Mm -hmm. He uses it a lot. Which, can I just say, <laughs> they played that goddamn theme over this conversation, well, over this little bit. And I've, I've been listening out for yeah, it because it hasn't been played for a really long time yeah. and this is now when they decide to play it go die in a bush <laughs> <laughs> supernatural writers yeah yeah they choose to play it now where dean's like oh yeah you know that time i died i wish i died yeah like i wish i died forever and none of this had happened like i never had to make the choice between my soul and sam and like have all this responsibility like oh you know yeah i wish i was dead it's an awful conversation if you really think about it. Yeah, it is. It's absolutely horrible. Even though he says, you know, I guess things are different now. Like, oh no, he's just, he doesn't even wish for it to be different. He just accepts that it's different. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> the problem is, is like, does he think that he caused a lot of these issues because he went back? You know, would Sam have still died? Would he have sold his soul? I mean, what I think he's talking about here and he goes on to say is that he regrets it because of what he did in hell. He maybe thinks if he'd gone with her then, he wouldn't have ended up there. Possibly. You know, I've done things. Horrible things. And someone upstairs still decided to give me a second chance. It just makes me feel... I don't know. I mean, he saved a lot of people, so... Yeah, and... The thing is, again, Dean is missing the part 
where he didn't have a choice. Yeah. Yeah, he hesitated, and then that's it gave the them time mm-hmm. to it gave t- time for John to make the deal with that's Azazel. True. Yeah. But he his choice was taken by a father figure. It all comes back around and about. <laughs> so it's it's not him. <laughs> He's car- again. He's carrying this guilt that he doesn't need to carry because he he thought Tessa was bad. Yeah. It took Tessa a long time to convince him that actually no, it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. And then no. John brought him back. So what could John- he've done? I know. I know. I know. He wouldn't be Dean if he wasn't blaming himself for something. So no, you know. <laughs> yeah, I just think it's all. I don't know. The fact that he wishes... I mean, we always thought... I mean, because I hadn't remembered that he got his memories back. We both thought at the time that he was going to go with her. Yes. Yeah, so I guess this just confirms that as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did also make a note that it was... <laughs> uh, is that because we know Dean so well, or is it because... Yeah, I'm going to say that. <laughs> He's just... Unfortunately, throughout a lot of Supernatural, Dean's ready to check out. Yes. Um, and I think from that point, you know, he's done with his destiny stuff. He's tired of it already. He's not even 30 and he's like tired of it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, I feel for his character so much. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he does say, yes, I guess things are different now. And Tessa says, what the angels on your shoulder? And he's like, oh, you know about that. He said, don't get me wrong. The most, uh, most of the ones I've met are dicks with wings. You say most of the ones he's met. Maybe he's including mm-hmm. Anna in that. <laughs> <laughs> but still you know I've done things horrible things and someone upstairs still decided to give me a second chance it just makes me feel and they I don't know I mean yeah I guess he doesn't know how to feel he feels chosen right like yeah he's on the path to something but like what that thing is is concerning <laughs> mm-hmm. Sam obviously interrupts him just as I get into the good part and you know he introduces Cole to Tessa and she says, like, I'm not going to hurt you, which is true. Mm-hmm. And um, Cole says that he saw black smoke at his funeral. And it says, at, not at the cemetery, at the funeral home. It was everywhere. Um, and as they're talking about this, the lights start flickering again. Dean looks to Tessa. Um, it's not her. And the front door opens and black smoke comes through. As everyone sort of ducks, Tessa disappears. Well, how the hell are we supposed to fight that? I don't know. Learn some ghost moves? By tonight? Yeah, sure, I'll meet you back at Mr. Miyagi's. Who's Mr. Miyagi? I do <laughs> I do love this next part of being basically this next part is a supernatural version of a montage. It is, training, I thought so too. It's <laughs> training a ghost montage. Training montage. It's amazing. <laughs> we go to the porch and they're trying to make this windmill go and like Dean can't do it even though he's he's staring at it like he did the same face. It's the same face he makes in the French mistake when he's trying to act. It's <laughs> <Yes>. that face. <laughs> I am concentrating really yeah. hard face. <laughs> uh, he's not making it move. And then Cole's like, well, I can do it, you know. And he makes everything move, like the port swing and stuff. Dean's impressed. I like Dean. It's, it's so sweet with kids. He's like, wow, you're so Amityville, which is a great, <laughs> great reference. Um, and then it cuts to them fighting like Cole's punching Sam and then Mm. he punches Dean and then he punches Sam again they're both trying to get them to hit him and just saying like you have to get mad to hit things Mm -hmm. um as he's trying to get them to hit him Dean's like I think I'll stick to picking on some of my own size and it's like (laughs) it's not Sam is it (laughs) 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 eventually Sam like does kind of block him and uh, it doesn't go to hit him, but he like just blocks him, mm-hmm. and the uh, Cole like phases away. And again, Dean's like, "Whoa, are you got to teach us that!" <laughs> so enthusiastic. Mm-hmm. So I guess we're assuming from that montage that they learned some ghost things because we don't actually ever really see them do it <laughs> during that. Yeah. They should have fully leaned into this, like phasing Running. up some stairs, yeah. or, like, <laughs> Put some really good music to it or something. I mean, they've already used Eye of the Tiger, so they can't use it again. I mean, but... they clearly have the rights to it, so like, go, <laughs> go fully on it. <laughs> so eventually they get to his funeral home and it's covered in like glowing blue sigils that we've not really seen before. Mm-hmm. Anything look like that. 
And um, Dean says this looks like New Jack City. I have no idea what that reference is. I assume it's like something in Vegas. I don't know why. Like lights, I guess, you know, like mm-hmm. neon lights. Neon lights, yeah. Sam says maybe it's Demon Invisible Ink and you can only see it in the veil and they don't know what it's for. They go into the funeral home and we see another sigil on the floor this time. Um, and in it are Tessa and an old man who is presumably the first Reaper that was captured. They see a guy standing guard who, again, is most likely a demon. And so Dean just says, dude, check me out. And then, like, does the phasing thing and taps the guy on the shoulder and punches him. <laughs> and then he, he phases out again. And then they kind of do this, like, Sam does it, like, punches him. It's, it's quite funny. Dean says, like, you know, this ghost thing's kind of rad. <laughs> <laughs> who says rad dean 90s surfers that's who i mean he's he's making a a karate kid reference yeah like <laughs> yeah and then another guy appears from behind a curtain which okay all right drama students yeah. <laughs> and um he's carrying a, a, an iron chain but his hands are like smoking so again he's clearly a demon and they managed to like hook it over something else and trap Sam and Dean inside. And they never they they never use this. They never use this. Did they even use iron against demons that much? Not really. No, not really. Like if they stabbed a demon with an iron poker, like that would do a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. And then another guy comes into the room and I was like, oh I know who this is, my god. No. Yeah. It's the guy we all know as Alistair. Yes. And it's like the actor who gives me the chills when he plays Alistair. Like mm-hmm. the other two have been good, but this guy is like flat out like oh he just gives me the full creeps. He's so good. Yes. <laughs> I think it it's gotta be like his face shape, right? Like the way that the light can catch certain parts of his eyes. Yeah. I've seen this actor in other things and I still think of him as Alistair. <laughs> um and it's it's the like kind of drool that he's got like his voice mm-hmm. the way he like elongates his words he's just he it's like he's so powerful he's like not in a hurry to even speak yeah you know i i just i think it's just such a cool choice i love him so much in this even though he's he's a horrendous character um, <laughs> and he he says boys find the place okay so it's almost a hello boys, but not quite. Mm-hmm. We've had two now. <laughs> <laughs> they're just they're dropping the hellos. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I really like the way they do make their eyes roll back for the white ball. I wish they kind of did it with other demons, because the other ones just kind of cloud over. I just again, I wish that they'd made the smoke also white when he smokes out. Yeah. Or like veins of white or something in it. Just yeah. to sh- just to show that there is like a difference between just like your regular low level demon. Like and doing the same for uh Abaddon and mm-hmm. Crowley and all, like the crossroad demons, I think that would have been It would a have nice been touch. interesting. Yeah, and it's like the showing the hierarchy and and almost like I guess my head canon is and I guess it's kinda of confirmed, is that like Lilith and Alistair and Abaddon and all those guys are like the first demons, so they're the most mm-hmm. powerful, right? So it co- would have been cool to distinguish them in some other way. But I think even Abaddon, they drop the white eyes later. She has black eyes, right? I thought she had red, but I, I oh, don't I had, know. Oh, maybe red. Red would make sense with her hair and everything. Honestly, can't remember. Mm-hmm. But that would have been cool too. And like Azazel having yellow smoke or something. Yeah. As well. It just I don't know that would look like it would make him look so like infectious, which is what mm-hmm. he is because he's like giving these demon blood to all these kids anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think they're kind of like factions of the horsemen a little bit? Because like yellow eyes being like pestilence. infecting, pest- yeah. yeah, pestilence, and then Alistair being death, so white. Yeah, that's kind of a cool theory. Even Abaddon fits into that with her like red warness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it, but I don't think it's intentional. No, not at all. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but we can think that and yeah. think that's done on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who's the last horseman? I can never remember. Oh, famine. Famine, and he's 
black. I mean, no, the, that, that would be really funny, though, because the other prince of hell it looks like Colonel Sanders. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So they did it by accident, but completely on purpose. That's hilarious. Oh, dear. So um, we see Alistair and his eyes return back to, like, normal. Mm -hmm. And then he picks up a shotgun that has rock salt in it and aims at Dean and, shot like, fires at him. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Dean reappears, which... I wish they would have explained what happened at that point. Yeah, to, to, them. Act to actually find out what the rock salt does. I mean, mm -hmm. the way he talks about it later, like, I assume it hurt. Yeah. But, I mean, where did you go, Dean? Second and death. And then he, he like, <laughs> <laughs> he just reappears in this exact same spot as well. It's not like he was blasted away. It's just like, did, I don't know. Did Dean just, like, stop existing for, like, 30 seconds there? Like... <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Alistair says to Sam, why don't you try some of your mojo on me now, hotshot? And Dean, like, looks over at him, at Sam and is like, what are you... What was he talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, then Alistair's like, it's hard to get it up when you're not wearing meat. <laughs> oh, he's so horrible. He's so slimy. Oh, yeah. and I, I like him so much. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam says, well, go to hell. And he's like, oh, if only I could, but they keep sending me back up to this Arctic crap hole. Further confirming it's freezing outside. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's very true. I mean, I mean that's, that's got to be quite a shock from hell. To, I mean, Ruby Ruby 1.0 is the only one who's confirmed that it's actually hot in hell. Yeah. Dean hasn't actually said that it was actually horribly hot in hell. That's true. I mean, that's, mm, technically it should be very, very cold, right? The further down you get in hell. Mm. Anyway, but yeah, mm. it's probably because it's just like, yeah, freezing outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, he then shoots Sam and he comes up to the, up straight up to Dean mm. and says, by the way, it's good to see you again. And he says it in such a way that's just like, it's almost like a lover's greeting, it, right? Right. There is a very strange relationship between Dean and Alistair. By the way. It's um, good to see you again, Dean. I, I think it's carried through. It's it's uncomfortable. Yeah. It's maybe not a lover's one, but very much like a, an affection. There's an affection there. Yeah. I mean, Dean is his best student, right? Mm-hmm. And also probably his biggest, I don't know, I want to say like competition. He's, mm -hmm. The thing is, I, I mean, we'll talk about this definitely in that more in the next episode, but um, Alistair, he doesn't want to kill Dean. He's his, like, greatest triumph. He's his, like, prodigy, mm -hmm. you know? he He's his apprentice. He, he wants he, to pass on his knowledge to him. It's a very, it's an odd, very odd relationship. It's almost like, I don't know. It was it was like a like a like what you watch um if you watch Criminal Minds and stuff. So it's like mm -hmm. a serial killers work in pairs kind of thing. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It feels like that kind of relationship that they have. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that Dean truly enjoyed it? <laughs> it's really tough. I think he's Be very good at it. Yeah. I also wonder if there's a little bit of like. We know that Dean is somewhat righteous. Yeah. And he would probably be assuming that everybody who comes to hell is a bad person. Mm. So I know he's like, he's not super into like having to torture people and he didn't enjoy that idea. But at the same time, maybe just a little bit. Yeah. He possibly. liked it. And that's why he's got like quite a bit of guilt. This is, a, this is, I, I'm going to make it worse. And again, I'll probably talk about this again next episode, but. The thing is, is that Dean has issues with authority figures, right? He craves approval. He's mm. craved approval from John. He's craved approval from later on from God, from everybody, right? Right. And for the first time in his life, I say life in quotation marks because he doesn't know how, he has someone who is telling him that he is good at something and like has their approval. I, I do think Alistair probably gave Dean a lot of, I don't know, like that kind of very twisted, like father figure energy. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I and can I see think that. That's why he says that he like enjoyed it. Maybe not necessarily like the torturing itself, but the feeling of being good at something and someone being proud of him for being good at something, which mm-hmm. is very messed up. But I think it's ugh, Alistair brings out the kind of worst traits of Dean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so he Dean then says, "You can shoot us all you want, but you can't kill us." And Sam reappears, and Alistair says, "That's ah, that's so." <laughs> um, it then cuts to Pamela in the motel room, and she goes to double check that the door is locked. We can see that the window has been opened because the curtain is blowing. Yeah, um, we're then back into the funeral home. Alistair is now holding a scythe. Mm-hmm. Or like a, I thought it was more of a sickle, but I guess it's... It's like a small... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it looked more like a sickle than a scythe, but it's described as a scythe. Yeah. Um, they're probably uh, used for different things. They are. Have you ever seen someone actually use a scythe? It's very cool. To cut grass. You know, I don't think so. It's very cool. So he, Alistair's like, okay, well, I've got a job to do. You know, the moon's in the right spot. The board is set. Let's get, uh, let's get started. And Dean's like, it's a little on the nose that, you know, you're using a scythe to kill a reaper. Which, ha 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 ha. Let's just say that. <laughs> I mean, this is, it also kind of gives into like how they do know each other quite well because there's a little bit of banter between them almost. It's a little on the nose, don't you think? Is it? Well, old friend lent it to me. You know, he doesn't really ride a pale horse. But he does have three amigos. And they're just jonesing for the apocalypse. Obviously, this is in reference to the horseman. Which is really funny to me because he's he's implying here that death gave him the, the scythe. Mm-hmm. And I, I can see that, actually. Yeah? I Yeah, because death doesn't care either way for anybody. He probably, like, I would imagine that they were, death was approached for some reason by mm. Alistair and that he needed this weapon to kill something and Death's like, okay, well it needs to die, so yeah, here you go, have it. But it imp I dunno, I don't know. I feel like this implies that that death is on their side, like mm. wants to start the apocalypse, where I always got the impression and I again I don't know if this is just Neil Gaiman's death skewing my brain and also good omens, but I always felt from Supernatural that although death is one of the horsemen they're a neutral party. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I feel like that comes across Yeah. in this as well. But it's like, but then why would he help hasten the apocalypse by giving Alistair a scythe? Unless they stole it. Because he said an old friend lent it to me. And I, I wonder if you could read that. Oh, I don't know. As like, they, because they steal stuff. I mean, later on, the Winchester steals stuff from death all the time. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah because death in this i'm trying to remember is, their interaction over pizza like what was that what said then it, it is very much like yeah you're right i don't i don't really recall it but it's it is very neutral in that but then he also wants to help them because i feel like there was supposed to maybe like be retaliation against reapers or maybe it was because of this possibly i honestly don't remember but yeah maybe i mean you can read it also as he's playing both sides i mean at this point in this episode it sounds like death's on their side with the four you know the other three horsemen Mm -hmm. so okay fine let's see where this goes (laughs) yeah and it's coming up the season five right yeah I'm Ooh, so excited. I love I'm five. so excited. Yeah. Anyway, so he, Alistair goes over to the old creepy reaper, mm-hmm. um, does a spell, and as the spell finishes, he kills the reaper, and it's sort of like lightning strikes as his death, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like I was like expecting to be like a whole bunch of like a blood splatter or something. Yeah. But there isn't. So I was like, oh yeah, because there's already dead. <laughs> Technically. Because <laughs> yep. there's not really a body there. So, <laughs> of course. I do find it interesting that they keep the like human shape. Mm. They didn't go back to like the ghostly looking Reaper. And they and they, they kind of don't for when they show Reapers on screen. Not they really. Always, 
human shaped yeah yeah i guess it's easier <laughs> yeah that's true it's a lot cheaper <laughs> and then alistair walks over to tessa and there's a whole bunch of shots of like sam and dean like looking at something and then tessa looking at something they're looking at a chandelier is i wonder what they're gonna do with that yeah <laughs> it's another emperor's new groove moment yeah yeah it really is it's like it's so ridiculous <laughs> it is and so the uh the chandelier drops and it breaks the seal and tessa manages to escape mm-hmm. yeah and then back in the motel room pamela is like well i, I know you're here i can smell you um you afraid of a skirt which i thought was kind of great <laughs> okay. she then fights a demon somehow she's just really cool she is just, just like those leather room. pants yeah <laughs> <laughs> she goes over to sam and like wakes him up yeah and the demon grabs her throws her across the room and then stabs her in the stomach now this is the point where i'm like well where was Cass? This is mm. the second time he's let something bad happen to Pamela. <laughs> That's true. He's got some apologizing to do in heaven. That's all I'm saying. That was an interaction I would have liked to have seen in heaven in the roadhouse or whatever. It's Cass being like, Pamela, I'm really sorry about your eyes. And that time I let you get stabbed to death by demons. <laughs> well, he's not going to look out for Pamela. He's going to be looking out for Dean. So he's outside the funeral home but his point. body is there but his, his body is, is is in the hotel room so why is Cass not there protecting his body it doesn't matter if his ghost is like getting shot up his body's there yeah that's true <laughs> Cass should have been and I actually thought Cass was going to turn up because I swear when the window opened and all that kind of stuff that I heard the like the wing sound mm -hmm. um but then it wasn't him so I was like oh, okay but yeah no Cass should have definitely turned up I mean they want to reveal him later but maybe he thought like, oh, Pamela's got this. Like, what? I don't know. Or, you know, the whole natural order things and casualties. They don't like at this point, <sighs> angels don't care about people. It's true. So why would he save someone who he already warned her not to like look at him? Yeah. Right? <sighs> so Pamela manages to wake Sam up um, and then Sam does his like, demon thing <laughs> <laughs> throws him across the room and then pulls out the, the and exercises the demon yeah sam rushes over to pamela and like checks on her and he says well you know i can't die this town so there's no mm. blood or anything which was kind of that was one thing i noticed when he pulled the knife out there was no blood on the knife yeah yeah and i was like oh well, that's weird like, of course because nobody can die yeah and then pamela says you know stop stop your worrying just get me a drink uh, Sam says, you need a doctor? He's like, no, make me a drink. <laughs> Dean is now going to look for Sam because he disappeared. Yeah. They didn't know where. Tessa's also disappeared to go do her job, mm -hmm. basically, because now there's no threat. And so Dean's just walking down an alley and then Alistair shows up. You can't run, Dean. Not from me. I'm inside that angsty little noggin of yours. So true. <laughs> and then some blue white lightning strikes him and Alistair disappears. Come and on. Dean says huh? Sorry, but what what was that lightning? I, I don't know. No he was smoted, but not in a way that <sighs> I don't know. It was so more like powerful than anything else we've ever seen an angel do, but maybe it was multiple angels, fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was a whole legion of them. Mm -hmm. And then Dean says, what the hell? And then Cass has the best line ever. <laughs> what the hell? Guess again. I was going to say it would be my forever my favorite line, but maybe not. Maybe my favorite line of season four. Yeah. And Dean turns around and Cass is there. It's just like... <laughs> I think the, the reason why I love it so much is I've mentioned this before we start recording. It's his first, like joke <laughs> <laughs> or like joke that like at the ex like <laughs> yeah no this is his first joke it's just it's so silly i just love it i i, I also love it i i do it's amazing it's <laughs> i mean so Cass is there and 
I noticed throughout this whole interaction, first of all, I don't know what's going on with like Nisha's eyes, but he's just like squinting a lot. Like it's the cast squint, but like mm-hmm. ramped up to 10. <laughs> <laughs> I know that lightning took out of him. He's like still blinded by yeah. it. Ooh, after, after images. Yeah. Or like he can't quite look at Dean. He's just too radiant. Um, I mean. <laughs> um, and also through this, he's not quite looking at Dean either. Mm-hmm. Um, it's quite interesting. I find Cass does that a lot. When you watch season four, he, does, he has conversations without looking at people. Yes. Um, and it's only when he's saying something important that they, he'll then turn to them and actually look at them. And it, it kind of plays into the fact that well, I don't. Well, I don't think Cass consciously thinks he's better than humans. Mm. There is a little bit of like you're you're beneath me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He'll, I, yeah. I also think it's it's a lack of interaction. Like he doesn't know that he can look at people while talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the window to their souls, right? So he doesn't want to look at. <laughs> that's true. People's souls. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, Dean's too radiant. He's so <laughs> <Too> glowing. <laughs> He's glowing. Cass says, "You and Sam just saved the seal. We captured Alistair Dean. This was a victory." And Dean's like, "No, no, thanks to you. Like, where the hell were you?" <laughs> what makes you say that? You were here the whole time. Enough of it. Well, thanks for your help with the rock salt. Cass says that the script in the funeral home, they couldn't get through it. And Dean, again, reasons that it was angel proof. So this is like, again, the first time that they've kind of shown that they can ward against angels. Mm-hmm. So I hope that they were like jotting some of those down <laughs> in their memory. I was memory. thinking the same thing. If anybody would remember, it would be Sam. Yeah, exactly. And Cass says, well, why do you think I recruited you and Sam in the first place? And when Dean gets confused, he says, that wasn't your friend Bobby who called Dean. It wasn't Bobby who told Sam about the seal. Again, like Cass is like, yeah, it was it was me. <laughs> like he looks really ashamed of doing this. I guess it's kind of lying, isn't it? You know, it's, yeah. He, he deceived them slightly. Mm-hmm. Do you think this is why Dean was so kind of like not on board for this case, like not wanting people to like die because he's like, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> no, this is so funny because like Cass's next line was is basically like, if I'd asked you. You just seem to do the exact opposite. So, like, Dean has, like, a six, like, Cass is asking to do something sense. Like, better not do it. <laughs> <laughs> so as soon as Sam brought it up, he was just, like, getting the vibe of, like, I shouldn't be doing this case for a reason I'm not sure of. <laughs> <laughs> There's a ping that's going on. <laughs> and, yeah, no, you're right, though. It's maybe not something that Bobby would normally send them to investigate. Um, He might flag it for them. But, like, Sam was very, very gun-ho, though, about mm-hmm. doing it. I mean, actually, so while while Dean is trying to rebel against what the angels are trying to tell him to do, mm-hmm. I feel like Sam is much more like, okay, if the angels need me to do it, then apart from this whole demon thing, but that's because of his own twisted views on like saving people. Yeah. But he was willing to give it up when Dean had mentioned that the angels don't want you to do it. Exactly. So if Cass had just gone to Sam in the first place... I've been like, Sam, can you convince your brother to go do this case? He'd have been like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, man. I'll help you out. Anything for an angel, bro. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anything to get in your good graces, because I know I'm doing the thing that you told me not to do. Yeah. I'm still doing no chug chugging that demon blood. <laughs> um, anyway, so Dean's like, what? So what now? The people in this town, are they just going to start dying again? And Cass says, yes. Don't you think you can make a few exceptions? To everything, there is a season. You made an exception for me. You're different. And this is when Cass looks at Dean. He's like, really looks at him. Mm -hmm. And says, you're different. Ooh, it hits so good. (laughs) (sighs) And then Tessa appears and... Cass disappears at the same time. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Because they're the same person. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Have you seen them together in a room? No. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tessa asks for Dean's help. They go back to Cole's house and Cole sat like looking at his mum, looking at pictures of him when he was little. He doesn't want to go. Tessa's there. She's wearing like a white dress now. Mm-hmm. Um, she looks very... I don't know, innocent and floaty. Yeah. yeah. And Cole even says, like, tell your brother thanks for nothing. Like, he realises that Tessa's here for him. 
And she says to him, like, well, don't you see how unhappy your mother is? And Cole says, that's why I want to stay. Tessa says, well, it will help her more if you leave. Cole's asking where, what happens after you go with the Reaper. Mm-hmm. And Tessa's not answering him. And Dean's like, she's not ever going to give you an answer. Reapers never do. But he says, trust me, staying here is a whole lot worse than anything over there. And he, you know, Dean explains basically ghosts. You know, one day mm-hmm. your family won't be there anymore. You're, you know, and you'll be left here alone. And it's okay to be scared. Oh, Dean's so good with kids, man. Mm-hmm. We're all scared. That's the big secret. We're all scared. It's just some profound stuff coming out of his mouth for once. <laughs> you know, when he's not making dick jokes in Jeremy Carver's episodes, mm-hmm. <laughs> he can be really good. He can. Cole asks Dean if he's going with him. It's oh, I know. <laughs> And he says the worst thing. Oh, I'm sure I'll be there sooner than you think. I'm just banging my head repeatedly against the desk at this point. But he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Only because if we learned anything from that god awful episode, time does work differently in heaven that it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. So wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> so in a place where you want time to be extended because you want to enjoy yourself (laughs) it's not but in a place where you want time to go quickly it drags on no you're just racing towards the end of the universe Annabelle's fine (laughs) I guess you get bored otherwise yeah I guess so and and also I guess at the point that Cole's going to heaven it's not good yet right they'll have their own individual heavens and it's all very much like a prism kind of thing yeah you just replay your same memory over and over again mm. it, they haven't it's not open world yet <laughs> that's true <laughs> the dlc hasn't been released i mean jack just played breath of the wild once and was like oh heaven needs to be like that <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> um so cole eventually agrees to go and like tessa embraces him he is literally embracing death mm-hmm. love that And you kind of see a weight lifted from his mother as well, which is quite nice. I'm glad they added that little detail. It was quite good. Dean says to Tessa, like, look out for that boy. And Tessa says, well, look out for yourself, Dean. And then she says to him, and I wasn't expecting this from Tessa. I've been around death from the get-go. You know what I see most? Lies. People say he's in a better place. At least they're together now. You all lie to yourself. And Dean, it's because like he said, deep down you're all scared. Stop lying to yourself, Dean. And he's Mm -hmm. like, what are you talking about? The angels have something good in store for you. A second chance. Really? Because I'm pretty sure, deep down, you know something nasty is coming down the road. Trust your instincts, Dean. There's no such thing as miracles. And then she disappears. <laughs> I wish yeah. I could be cryptic and disappear. <laughs> I would just I would just mess with so many people. So many people. Oh, you know how many times that would be so nice in your job and just let someone else figure it out for once? Yeah. It's like, read yeah. your emails, disappear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> So, yeah, she's implying that something bad is going to happen. Honestly, like, it's not... I'm glad somebody said it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. I really like Tessa as a character. I wish she'd been around more. I think she mm-hmm. eventually gets killed off. I'm, like, 100% yeah, sure she eventually gets killed off. Yeah. But I wonder how differently it could have gone if Tessa had been death, you know, at one point. Because she's still very, like, natural order. Yeah. But she does have a soft spot for Dean, at least. That's true. I mean, there are no other Reapers that treat Dean like this. Because no. even Billy doesn't like him. No, no. Billy. She got reluctantly full gets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, hmm. I mean, Death is actually kind of on their side for a bit. You know, he has some kind of sympathy for them for a while. Yeah. Again, he's a neutral party, though. I, I, I don't know if Tessa just embodies death more for me sometimes like she does seem like yes very much into the natural order and she is very neutral but she seems to, like 
want to carry along the story kind of thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah, I'm surprised that, like, Chuck didn't envision her as death. It's an interesting one, because I do love Billy, though. I'm not not taking anything away from Billy. I love Billy. Like, (laughs) yeah, Billy on on the Billy train. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I just... Also, it's just kind of cool, like, that death is kind of looking out for Dean, at least, because he dies so often, it would make sense if he had kind of, like, a reaper on his side. There was... Wasn't... There was a line at the beginning of this episode Mm -hmm. about, like, how they ditched death. Yeah. So it'd be kind of... It would have been nice to have a little bit of a callback to that. Yeah, exactly. Um, So our last scene of this episode, uh, they go back to the motel room... Um, and Pamela is unfortunately dying. Um, she manages to wake Dean up before she dies. That would have been awkward. <laughs> that would have been pretty awkward. <laughs> Tess would have been like, I'm back for some reason. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I mean, if anybody could put the soul back in the body, I'm sure it would be Tessa. <laughs> it's true, yeah. <laughs> Sam says to her, like, you know, it's fine. We just got to talk to Tessa. Like, she'll give you a, get her to hold off until you get better. But mm-hmm. she's like, I'm pretty sure that she's started up again. Um, she wouldn't have saved Pamela anyway. No. What we know about Tessa, she wouldn't have done. Because um, she's supposed to die now. We see like blood's like pouring over the wound now, where it wasn't before. Dean even confirms, you know, that Tessa's gone. So there's not nothing they can do. Mm-hmm. And Sam says like to her, I'm so sorry. And, you know, you don't deserve this. Which, yeah, Pamela's like, no, I don't. I told you. I didn't want to help you guys. And yet here I am dying because of you. Mm -hmm. I I do like that she calls them out on their, like, bull crap. I told you I didn't want anything to do with this. (sighs) Do me a favor. Tell that bastard Bobby Singer to go to hell forever introducing me to you two in the first place. Dean says, if it's any consolation, you're going to a better place. And Tessa just told him that's a lie. Yeah. And she says, you're lying. (laughs) Pamela's Mm -hmm. like, you're lying, Dean. I mean, she's a psychic. But Pamela says, what the hell, right? Everyone's got to go sometime. She pulls Sam close and like whispers to him. And she says to him, I know what you did to that demon. I can feel what's inside of you. If you think you have good intentions, think again. I'm like, ooh. Mm -hmm. Again, the cryptic. And then disappearing, which is Pamela's living a, a cryptic and dying, which is the next next level of that. Yeah, unfortunately, then yeah, she dies. It's almost the exact opposite of what's happening with Dean. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Dean had a good thing, mm-hmm. but is suspicious of it. Yeah, and Sam is doing a very bad thing, <laughs> but has good intentions of it. Yeah, exactly. They are very polar opposite. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, this ends with like Dean asking, what did she say to you? And Sam not replying as usual. And uh, it's really interesting at the end, it, they, they, they kind of chose this episode as well to have um, Kid Manor's like memorial at the end of this episode, which I thought was really yeah. nice. So this episode might have been the last one that he was an executive producer of. Oh, maybe I see. Because yeah. he was in the credits. Yep. Um, yeah, it was, it was very sweet. Hmm. Just picture like they had a little bit, like a couple pictures of him, yeah, directing and interacting with Jared and Jensen. I mean, yeah, it, it's it's nice to do that because I mean, he definitely had an impact on the series. Like his directing, we were like we gush about it for us. <laughs> so yes. long. I'm really sad we're not going to see another Kim Vanders episode of Supernatural. Like I really wish we could have seen what he would do with it in later seasons, mm-hmm. and maybe would have told him to turn down the color gradient a bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I feel right now in season four they have quite good balance of it. I do too. They're using they use color very well in this episode. This episode really as well to show when yeah. they were in and out of their bodies. And last episode, or not last episode, uh, like after school special where they're using the orange tones to show back in time. Like they do a mm-hmm. good job of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, this episode I like it. I thought it was okay. We learn a lot about Dean. I learned a lot about Sam actually. I don't know about everybody. Sam, yeah. Well, Sam's like power tripping, juiced up on demon blood, although we don't know it's demon blood yet. Dean's suspiciously sad of everybody and apparently want to die in season two. So we learned that. <laughs> or confirmed that. <laughs> <laughs> confirmed it, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's a very good character building episode. I mean, next episode we have On the Head of a Pin, which is going to be absolutely devastating. So 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. <laughs> yep. Yep, it's going to be... Uh... So it's funny, I'm looking at the stills on uh, IMDb, mm-hmm. and one of them is just horribly familiar. I know, right? It's like, you know, it's coming, and I don't want to watch it. So we're all going to have tissues, and we're all <laughs> we're all just going to have a little bit of a cry as we get through the next episode. Yeah. Oh, dear. I, I can't believe they... They brought back that theme now in this episode. We haven't had Dean's theme through all of season four, right? And then they just here now talking about Dean and death. It's almost like they are in some way linked forever. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Thanks for that. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm here for. It's been a while. <laughs> all right well um so we know what we're doing next week it's gonna be fun and so at the end of the episode we'd like to thank the pixel agora for his amazing logo art and if you would like to purchase that on a pin or a bag or a sticker uh it's available on our red bubble store and a portion of the profits will go to him and you can find us all over the interwebs of the social media variety. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. I don't know why I started with Facebook first, but whatever. Uh, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, search for Escaping Purgatory Podcast or Escaping Podcast on Twitter. And uh, come say hi. So this week we took part in some astral projection we kissed an attractive reaper and it brought back some unhappy memories but hopefully next week we can find our way out bye bye